when it comes to feeding your men pen there are so many options out there today you've got kibble you've got the raw diet you have canned food you have dehydrated food which one should you feed your pet now there's a lot of different opinions out there and if you just simply Google either way, guess what, you're gonna get the greatness about this or the, you know, why this is so bad. So in today's video, we're gonna try to pre present an objective argument for basically the good and bad and ugly of both the kibble diet and a raw diet. Now, like I said, nothing in this video is gonna make every single person happy because there is no true one answer for each person. So I'm not a veterinarian of any kind. I'm not a canine nutritionist and I've been to school for anything like that. So take this video for what it's worth. Okay, let's talk about a raw diet a little bit. So what it actually is a raw diet? So a raw diet here, and I'm actually pulling something here from the AKC, basically says here that it is something that can be homemade, it can be uh, store-bought, freeze-dried, or even dehydrated, and usually includes some type of organ uh, meats uh, muscle meat, um, and then also bones are usually whole, whole or grounded up bones, uh, and also some usually eggs, and also there are specific fruits and vegetables that are dog safe that are usually included in that diet. And so if you're choosing a raw diet, some of the benefits that uh, people have cited and some research that's been done shows that it, they have shinier coats, uh, healthier skin, um, also improved dental health has been cited, as well as uh, a big one is increased uh, energy and then for some you didn't realize i guess it's a smaller you know smaller stool so when your dog goes poop outside you know it's easier to clean up so what are some drawbacks of the um, raw diet so the problem the number one issue i've seen with the raw diet is that it is not something that's very regulated and so when it comes to preparing a meal for your dog it's very tough to make sure that they are getting all the required ingredients this is especially tough if you are preparing everything um, you know, from scratch by yourself. You buy all the ingredients and you're preparing every single meal. Now, obviously, that is a lot more cost effective than using one of the many services that are offered out there, um, such as Ollie's is one that comes to mind. They actually will you know, select it for you and send it to you and the you know, pre-portion package and everything. And therefore, I guess it's a little bit more regulated. It's been, and their diet has been tested by, like I said, a canine nutritionist or a veterinarian of some kind. But if you're preparing yourself, you don't have that luxury. And unfortunately, veterinarians even say, um, you know, there's a lot of cookbooks out there that you can buy, but even those usually don't have the required amount of uh, nutritional value, uh, carbohydrates and things of like that that your dog needs. Uh, you know, for a proper diet. Another issue with the raw diet is obviously, you know, you're handling raw food. And very quickly, I will, people have said that, well, you handle raw food whenever, you know, you're cooking, let's say, raw chicken for your family. Well, while that is the case, obviously, you will be handling raw food even more. And also another issue is this raw, uh, like it's to say, raw type of meat is gonna end up in your men pen stool when they go to the bathroom outside. And therefore, if you're not careful and you have kids playing outside, you gotta make sure, obviously clean it up and you always should anyways, but if something happens, there's more of a chance that that uh, salmonella or another type of disease can actually be contracted from some type of raw diet. Another issue is that pretty much if you're going on a raw diet is while you should be able to give them the proper portions, usually if we're not careful, especially with puppies, then we can basically give them too much of it and it can actually end up making them sick. So we have to be careful and definitely, so if you're going to be choosing a raw diet, then you need to either consult with your veterinarian or you need to consult with some type of nutritionist or if like I said, you're gonna go with some type of store-bought variety, normally that is something that's a little bit more FDA regulated. But either way, make sure you do your research and find out what it, you know, what you need to do before you start on that journey. Okay, so let's talk about the kibble diet. Now this kibble, it's called kibble, it's dry dog food, you know, um, there's a lot of different varieties on the shelf. There have been for decades and decades. Uh, since dogs have been domesticated, there's usually been some type of dry dog food. Now some of the pros of the kibble food, it is, you know, it's a lot more convenient. And now for some, I know they will think that, well, you shouldn't look for convenience when you're getting a pet. 
And that may be true, but let's be honest, in the world we live in today, it's not very easy to always dedicate as much time to everything we got going on um, to also then dedicate a complete raw diet to your pet. Um, so I don't necessarily care either way, um, but just keep that in mind. You know, it is obviously a lot easier to feed them. Um, also, it's something a lot easier to portion out. You know, once you figure out this is the amount of scoops that they're going to get twice a day or three times a day, then you kind of know that's what it's going to be. Get the right scoop and you're good to go. Additionally, when you buy the food and it's a lot more convenient for storage I and mean, you can have a dry storage area for it and therefore it's always there. You're not trying to put a thousand different raw type of foods available. Uh, in your refrigerator or in a freezer somewhere it's kind of just like i said right there in its own container also it's usually more readily available obviously at pretty much every store you go to there's always gonna be some type of dry dog food now caution that you want to make sure that you are getting the right type of dry dog food so while it is readily available you want to be careful getting it at certain stores i'm sure that just have the bottom of the barrel stuff available some other things that are good with dry dog food is this it's kind of easier for training you know, I'm a big, big advocate, and I say all the time on this channel that train when they eat, especially when they're puppies, uh, training when they're eating. Well, it's a lot more difficult to, if you had like some type of raw meat, obviously, to parse that out and to use for training, especially to be able to handle it correctly on your side. So, but if you have those obviously individual dry kibble pieces, each one of those is a training opportunity in your hands. So, if you have that, definitely that's a good uh, training thing there as well. And then also, um, you know when it comes to kibble it is going to be cheaper uh, cheaper alternative to a raw diet now once again there's very very cheap kibble and then obviously it can go to a lot more expensive you know the science diet type of diets that are more expensive but even so they're usually less expensive than getting the raw diet you know what are the drawbacks of the the dry kibble so a lot of them is the the substance they're made of you know advocates of raw diets you know will cite that hey dry kibble um, is made from things such as you know at a rendering plant it's made from diseased animals that we don't really know what's in them and there have been issues that you can find and you know you can do your own research and please do you know there's been issues in the 90s and the 2000s and just like any food it gets recalled now speaking of food you know, recalls so this happens obviously a lot right this happens for humans whenever they have processed food happens for animals as well so just because you see a recall doesn't mean that that alone, because obviously that chicken or that type of beef that you're maybe you're feeding your um, dog could also show some type of uh, recall that happened on that specific lot as well. But they have been known for recalls and also there have been issues when it comes to digesting um, for the dry dog food. Another thing is if you get the wrong type of uh, dry dog food, is it will have a lot of high in grain, you know, which grain is not usually in the diet for a dog, but a lot of uh, dog food companies have been known to put grain-based kibble and pretty much that fills out and therefore it's cheaper. Grain's cheaper obviously than other types of um, ingredients and then therefore, but it is not good for the dog's digestive system and it pretty much doesn't give them all the nutritional value that you, they need. So a little you know, side note here is if you are selecting to go with some type of dry kibble, the first thing you always have to check is look at the ingredients on the back and you need to make sure that it is a, a, a meat product that is listed first. Make sure that it's not grain. Now I'm not saying go with grain free because there's their own issues with that, but make sure that the number one thing is some type of actual and it's not like a meat byproduct, but it's actual chicken or it's lamb or it's salmon or whatever type of thing you're going for, make sure that it has it in there, okay? That will definitely make sure that you're at least getting the biggest amount of nutritional value for your pet and definitely don't, don't just look at the most expensive items out there. Make sure you go for the right ones and then like I said, do a little research on them before you make that decision. Okay, so we've watched so far this video. The question is, is Nate, which one do I get? And I have to tell you, there's not a, a perfect answer for this. Now, I know this video can seem probably slightly controversial because I know there's gonna be many people in each camp that will have many comments about it, but I wanted to present, like I said, a kind of an overview of this to kind of get you on your way. But please, if you take any homework away from this video, it's do your own research, 
figure it out, and definitely talk to a professional before you elect to go to any diet. And here's kind of the secret of it all. You don't need to do one or the other. You know, if you're wanting to try some raw type of options, don't feel bad if you also do dry kibble. I mean, if you're, if you're in the process of a big life change and you're moving, you know, let's say to like a different state or something like that, or you're going through this, or let's just say you've just added a new uh, family member to your house, you know, maybe you had a new baby or something, obviously going through this whole raw diet thing is not going to be the time to do that. So don't feel bad if you're like, hey, I'm going to give them some of this raw diet stuff. Hey, I'm going to give them some dry kibble too. Guess what? Make the best decision. Take care of the pet the best you can. And guess what? Everything will be okay. Okay, so thanks for joining us today. If you are considering getting a men pin and you don't have one yet, we just did a video talking about the you know the puppy men pin starter guide. So we'll post that video right here. Go check that out. It will get you really started on the right track. That's all we have here, and we'll see you over in that video.